Hello, good morning viewers. Still on to how to solve quadratic equations. In our previous lesson, we have used the completing the square method to solve quadratic equation, which is very important once you cannot factorize a quadratic equation. And apart from this completing the square method, there is a general formula for solving quadratic equation, which is given as x equal to negative b plus or minus uh, into square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Using formula to solve quadratic equation is directly related to the completing the square method because even the formula itself is derived from the completing the square method. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we derive this general formula for solving quadratic equation. You all know that this is the general form of a quadratic equation. Once you try solving this quadratic equation by the completing square method, you are going to obtain this formula, which we are going to look onto very soon. So the first step, we are going to take the constant to the right hand side because we only need the first and the second term. So we have ax squared plus bx equals, this is positive, once it crosses equality sign, it becomes negative c. And again, we are going to divide both sides by a because we need only x squared. So we have divided by a, we have x squared here, plus b over a, once you divide this by a, and this is equal to negative c over a. So what we need here is the coefficient of x, which is b over a. Then we take half of it, then we square the result. Half of this is equal to b over 2a. We square this, we obtain b squared over 4a squared. This is what we obtain by taking the square of the half of the coefficient of the middle term, which is x. We are going to add this term to these two terms to make it a complete square. So we have x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4 a squared equals. Initially, we do not have this term. I added it in order to make this a complete squared. So to make the equation balance, we have to add it to the other side. So we have b squared over 4 a squared minus c over a. Now we are free to factorize the left hand side, which is going to be x plus half of the coefficient of the middle term, which is going to be b over 2a, all squared. And this is equal to, we can now subtract this, they have common LCM, which is equal to 4a squared. If you take 4a squared and plug it here, you're going to obtain one, then one multiplied by b squared, you're going to obtain b squared, then minus. Now, if you plug a here, you are going to obtain 4a, then that 4a times c is going to make it 4ac. This is what we have. Again, we have a square here. To get rid of this square, we are going to take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root of this side will cancel this square, leaving only x plus b over 2a. And to the other side, you know, once you introduce a square root to a term that does not have a square root initially in an equation, you have to also introduce plus or minus. So we have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. You can take the square root of 4a squared because the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of a squared is a, but you cannot take the square root of the numerator. So we have from the left hand side x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
because we have taken the square root of the denominator, which is going to be 2a. Um, now we are going to take this to the right hand side because we are only interested in knowing what is x. So we have x from the left hand side. This is equal to, once this crosses equality sign, it will change to negative b over 2a plus or minus um, the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We have two fractions that have common denominator, which is 2a. Hence, we can take one of the denominator and add or subtract the numerators. This is going to be x equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Hence, we say this is the general formula used in solving quadratic equation of any kind. So thank you for watching. In our next class, we are going to look on to how to apply this formula in solving quadratic equations. Have a nice day.